All right, can everybody see my screen? Mm -hmm. yep. Excellent, wonderful. Yes. Thanks, folks. Okay, so as mentioned, we're here to talk about the municipal community grants, answer some questions, and walk everybody through what the program is, how you can find out if you're eligible, and how to write an application. So for the agenda, we'll be going over the program, eligibility, application as mentioned. Ashley's going to talk a little bit more about in-kind requests and then our favorite part, questions and answers. So municipal community grants, what are they? They're available to nonprofits and community-based organizations in Prince Edward County. And the whole idea is these grants are going to support our quality of place in the local economy. They're meant to improve the well-being and quality of life uh, for our community and residents in the area of arts and culture, heritage, recreation, environment, health, and human services. And preference is usually given to new programs, so I just wanted to let everybody know that. But if there's a promising program uh, that runs more than one year, uh, then it may also be successful for the grant. The community grants are available in three different streams and sizes. So grants of over $5,000, grants up to $5,000 in cash and in kind, and we'll talk a little bit more about what in kind is with a maximum amount of 2,500 uh, in cash available. And then there's the grant stream of uh, $1,000 or less in kind only. Now, just a reminder that there's approximately $243,000 available through the community grants program this year. And that dollar amount is a combination of the cash amount that's available and the in kind amount that's available. So eligibility. How do you know if you're eligible for this grant? So as mentioned, this is directed towards nonprofit organizations and community groups that support the above uh, areas. Places of worship that have partnerships and use space for open community activities and groups are eligible. That was a change that was made last year. As long as the programming is non-denominational and it's inclusive and open to the public, they are eligible to apply. And only one request per organization is considered in the fiscal year. So if you have multiple projects or ideas on the go, I would recommend taking a look at the materials that we have, maybe reaching out to me for a consultation to see what might be the best fit, uh, rather than sending in five or six different applications, because we're only going to consider one of them. So we want to make sure that it's the one that aligns best with the program. And then school boards, uh, businesses are ineligible for uh, the community grants. So as mentioned, with alignment and what's going to be the best fit, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this screen here because this is really the meat of uh, how do you ensure that your program is going to be the best fit for the community grants. So these are areas that align with the priorities of the municipality and also the county foundation. So again, this is where the grant dollars are coming from. So you'll want to make sure that your program aligns with vital signs and we have links to all of this on our website i'll make sure to send all of this out to everybody that's on the webinar afterwards and it's available through our website so the vital signs reports the community safety and well-being plan we have a direct link to that as well the thrive pec community economies pilot and then also the existing priorities of council so you'll want to take a look through and just kind of see where where is the links with what your organization and what your project is doing and how do I tie it in with these different priorities and again if you need help doing that or if you want to bounce that off somebody I would advise reaching out to me uh, we can arrange for a zoom call or a, or a phone call and chat about it and see what might be the best fit uh, and on that note I would advise reaching out earlier rather than later uh we have some you know some people tend to be a little bit more on the procrastinator side and if everybody reaches out five days before the grant deadline it's a little difficult to get in touch with everybody so sooner rather than later is is always good so along that vein what is ineligible we talked about what's eligible what what isn't so your activity needs to take place in prince edward county this is municipal dollars we want to make sure that it's benefiting our community so if your activity is outside of the county borders then it's not going to be eligible and if your funding is considered primary or is covering day-to-day -day costs 
that's not eligible within this program. Uh, you can have part of your costs support some operating fees that are, are um, geared towards supporting the project, but it can't be more than 20%. So for example, if you are hosting an event, let's say, and you know that uh, you've got some staff that are going to be spending time organizing the event, doing some communications. You just have to make sure that the overall ask of the funds that you are looking for, that operating component is not going to be more than 20 percent. So likewise, this grant is not meant to fund a deficit or shortfall, so it's not so it's not meant to um, to bump up operation dollars. It's meant to help fund projects to make our community a better place. And we, we can't fund applications that are incomplete. That's because it's unfair to everybody else that submitted a full application. So again, making sure that you have all the components and then I will also be your resource to connect with to make sure that you have everything in place. And if you are missing anything, just so that you are aware, because this might be a question, I will reach out to you and say, hey you're missing x or you're missing your budget so again that's why it's always good to get a start on this early in case for whatever reason if something doesn't get attached you have some time to work on that and then if you've been funded before and you haven't sent in your final report that also puts you at risk for not having your project funded so again a, a reminder to send in your final report uh, if you've been funded previously reports are due within a year of receiving funding and the whole idea or concept behind that is one to make sure that it happened of course uh, but two to make sure that we can see what the impact and outcome of your of your project or event was and then, of course, if you're not meeting the eligibility criteria, that uh, that takes you out of the eligibility um, field. And then, if your uh, if your project is an annual activity that's meant to support operating, that's something that isn't really aligned with uh, with the scope of the grant. So, in terms of timing and overview, uh, this program is open until April 14th we have a noon deadline. You can submit your application in many forms. Uh, so there's the online submission that goes directly to us. You could also choose to opt to print your application form. And then that printed form can either be scanned in and emailed to me, or it can be dropped off or mailed to our location, which we have on the screen here. And it's also uh, available on our website. And then in terms of project timeline, your project should be completed within a year of receiving funding. So by approximately next July. So now I'm going to turn things over to Ashley Stewart to talk a little bit more about in-kind community granting. Over Thank, to you, Dom Thank you, Dominique, and good morning, everyone. Um, really happy to be here today. I work in community services and programs. And I work on a number of projects, but uh, have worked on community grants for the past couple of years. And it's one of my favorite programs to work on. So it's always really nice to see all of the ideas um, and programs that come in that really add so much to the community. So very happy to be here today and talk a little bit about um, the in-kind stream that uh, is available this year. I see I'm having some issues with my camera it keeps turning off so I'll try to keep an eye on that but uh, I am here even if it's a dark screen so for in kind um, the in kind stream is just the the opposite stream of the cash so rather than providing money to applicants we're able to provide municipal services um, as, a, as opposed to cash um, you want to just flip back yeah there we go um, so 99% of the time, this is for the rental of municipal spaces. So we have, oh, there it goes again. We have uh, many municipal facilities that are available for rent. So places like town halls, community centers, crystal palaces, um, the ice pads, the ball diamonds and the parks, all of those are available for rent. And we see that a number of applicants will put in um, requests for in-kind so that they can access some of these rental facilities to um, put on the programming that they're looking to do with the community grant. Uh, everything is based on the fees and charges bylaw. So it's a 50 page document um, that uh, outlines every cost uh, for municipality. 
if you scroll through it um, towards the end, there's all of, of the schedules that have all of the listings for rentals for places like the town halls and community centers and all that. There's also some other things that can be considered in kind. Um, most of the applications focus on facilities, um, but there are other things like the um, banner hanging. So there is one group that applies every year um, to hang the banner across Picton Main Street. And so that is also considered an in-kind. Um, if you're not sure, just reach out to Dominique or to myself and we can go through um, any in-kind before uh, submitting your application and see if it's a good fit for in-kind or if it should be a cash contribution. Um, <clears throat> so really the in-kind is set to cover or offset rental fees or whatever the, the fee is. Um, so if you're looking to say rent a town hall for programming, you would go into the fees and charges bylaw, see what the hourly or daily rental rate is, um, and just multiply it by the number of days or hours that you need um, the hall for. And there's taxes on rentals. So just, you know, do your multiplication and then add the tax. And that is uh, the amount that you would put in for the in-kind application. The other option, if you have higher in-kind, is if you just want to put in a set amount. Um, this might be for, you know, places with higher rental fees, like maybe the community centers or Crystal Palace, um, or even ICE rental, is you could put a set amount of, say, I don't know, $2,500. And um, if your rental fees are higher than that, then they would simply credit the $2,500 on your invoice when it comes time to pay. So that would just reduce your fees rather than covering them altogether. Um, it's important to note that there is a deposit on every rental. So that is not part of the in-kind, that is paid separately, um, but it is fully refunded as long as you meet the, the terms of um, the damage deposit. It, is, it does come back to the renter. Do you wanna flip to the next one? Um, so this is a, a big one. So timing is tricky. Um, generally, we really try to get the community grants information out to the public as early in the year as possible. Um, this year was a little bit different because we have a new council in place. And so the budget was bumped um, into the new year. It was in February rather than uh, in December. So we weren't able to launch the program details until the budget had been uh, finalized and signed off. And so with the budget wrapping up in late February, we were able to launch the program in early March, um, which just means it's a little bit later in the calendar year. And then the notifications um, and timing, it just bumps everything um, further down into the year. So with, with this year's timing, I think the idea is to get notification out by um, sort of you know, late May, early June, um, which is halfway through the year. And so what we're going to do is um, this year, as part of the report to council with the approvals, we'll just ask for some um, extra time so that if in-kind does have to go into uh, the next calendar year, into 2024, that we'll have a deadline, a specific deadline in there. Um, so ideally, it's always best if you can use the money in the calendar year that uh, it's provided, so in 2023, but we will likely be able to provide some leniency and go into maybe the first couple of months of 2024, just because it was a later process this year. Um, we really encourage you to book ahead and book early. So if you are using in-kind for uh, rental of facilities, um, you can reach out to Jane, who is our, our booking coordinator. Jane is on the call with us as well. I think she just joined. Um, so if you know your dates, you know that your event is going ahead, um, just go ahead and book it. And if you do get an in-kind grant, then the cost, it, you pay up front, but it's reimbursed if, uh, if the grant is approved. So you can get that money back, um, especially for facilities that, um, you know, tend to book up quickly. I would imagine the Crystal Palace and um, some of the community centers have events on. So if you're really set on a date, a specific date, then just go ahead and book it early. Um, and finally, we have just over $42,000 this year for in-kind grants. So this is what uh, Dominique and the TCF, our Community Foundation Adjudicators, will um, work with to divide up between all of the applications that 
come in. That's great. Thanks so much, Ashley. That's a, a lot of really valuable information. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to stop sharing so I can see everybody's faces and dig into some questions because I'm sure that there's going to be specific questions. And thank goodness we have Ashley on the call and Jane Vader is also around uh, from the municipality. So hopefully we can answer any in-kind specifics or project specific questions uh, or even uh, overview questions if there are any. So does anybody have any questions about the community grants? Feel free to raise your hand or you can type it in the chat box if you prefer. Sandy. Hi, good morning, Dominic and everybody else on the call. So we have put forward an application uh, for the Crystal Palace, we have that reserved for our wrap up event for our hike for hospice and that's happening at the end of May. So we already reserved that a while ago, but so if we are approved for the in kind. Uh, we talked about reimbursing if the grant is approved, so would that be something that would be grandfathered in as well. And what is the uh, the timing? What, when's the event? I know you said that you've pre-booked it. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, May 26th. May 26th. So that should, based on timing, it, it should work because uh, as Ashley alluded to, uh, we should be sending out notifications end of May, early June. So that would be after approval. So yes. Okay. That's it becomes a little bit hairy if you had said my event is tomorrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions about the the community grants process, how to write an application, how to send it in? Um is it is currently online, is it? The application? Yeah, we have it available in uh, two forms. So online, uh, you can submit directly online, or you can also access a PDF form where you can print that out and fill it out manually, uh, whatever is easier for you. And if you don't have access to a printer, uh, you are able to get support with printing uh, through the Prince Edward County Libraries. So there's currently a link on the website to the application. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yes, absolutely. Yep. The link is active and I'll make sure that this is uh, put in the chat box as well. And David, if you have any issues, I'll put uh, our email address there and we can get in touch. I think okay. actually we have okay. been in touch. Uh, anyway, any support that you need, we're happy to help you with the process. No, that's fine. I, I hadn't noticed it, any link to it there before, but I'll have another look. That's fine. No problem. We've got um, we've got a little green banner at the top of our website page. So any new programs, uh, anything that you need quick links to, we put it up there just to make it easy. Because uh, I know that going through drop down menus and trying to find things through the uh, the web of uh, information can be a little bit difficult, and you can get lost. Uh, so anything that's new and current, we put in that green banner at the top. So keep your eyes okay. peeled for that. But I'll give you a direct link right now. Okay. Thanks. No problem at all. Deborah. Yes, I have a question about the the division of the of the grant. Uh, five thousand. Um, un, is it under five? Five thousand and under, and then a thousand. There's so, three. Yeah, there's the three categories. There's five thousand and above. There's up to 5,000, which is part cash and part in kind, where you can apply for up to uh, 2,500 uh, in, uh, in, in cash and in kind. And then there's the third category, which is up to $1,000. And that option is just for in kind. Okay, so if you had a, an application for 5,000 and you didn't need in kind, you would apply to the 5,000 and above. Uh, let me just double check. I believe that that is the case, but I want to make sure that I have the right answer for it. Yes, that is correct because the up to 5,000 would be a max of 2,500 in cash. So yes, if okay. you did not need a in-kind component, then that is the correct stream. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Any other general questions? Happy to field anything. Any tough ones for Ashley? I like to put her on the spot. <laughs> I, have, I have a question. Good morning, everybody. Um, if 
I'm not sure if you have to select your stream at the outset of the application. Um, if an application, is it possible that you would be partially granted? So if you applied, you know, say in the 2,500 to 5,000 range, and then you were just granted for under 1,000 in in-kind services only, is that something that can happen or is it sort of an all or nothing? That's a great question, Robin. So there's kind of two components. One, the first one that I heard is, do you need to decide where you're going to be from the offset? Uh, and the answer is yes. So when you're applying, you're going to have a really clear idea of what stream you're going to apply for. And that's going to be based on what your project is and the amount of money that you're looking for. One other piece that we've built into this year's uh, application process is we have two different forms. So there's one form for 5,000 and above. Uh, because you're asking for some more money. So there's some more information that we need. And then there's another form for the other two streams. So up to 5,000 and the 1,000. So there's just two. The smaller amounts get one application form. The larger grants have another one. Uh, the reason for that is feedback that we received is you might be asking for $500 in kind and you have to go through the exact same hoops and barrels process as somebody that's looking for $15,000. So yes, you'll want to know what you're applying for. The second question that Robin asked was, if you ask for X amount and you don't get approved for that, is there uh, the ability to have that amount lowered? Uh, is it an all or nothing process? And I can share with you that quite often uh, that is what ends up happening um, because we are what we call oversubscribed most often and by that i mean that there's more requests for money than there is money available um, so not all projects get funded to the full amount uh, just because we aren't able to so there is a chance that your your project uh, may be funded for a lesser amount and we do when we're looking through um, the criteria and if everything's a fit uh, and, and it seems to all make sense. We do try to find ways to make sure that the project can be successful. Uh, so you may find that we do reach out to you and say that you have been approved, but for this amount, will that work with your project? Can you make something work that way? Does um, that answer it, your question, Robin? It does. Thank you very much. Yeah, sorry. Uh, just following up on that, if, if you're applying for an amount that's above five and you get part of it, which puts you below five, is that problematic for being funded in the above five category? No, it's it, it it's not problem uh, problematic in terms of the funding on the on the other side. Uh, no, and in terms of reporting, it doesn't change anything there. Uh, the only thing that we would have to work through is making sure that you can still successfully deliver what you're looking to do with lesser right. funds. Yeah. Okay. And, and on that note, and, and Rachel, I do see your hand up, so you're going to be next. On that note, what I do advise, just knowing that this program is very popular, it's, it's always going to be oversubscribed. Take a look at your projects, find one that is going to be the best fit. And, and some people have a methodology when they're applying to grants that I'm going to, I'm going to apply for the moon and see if I land in the stars. Um, and, and that's very difficult because it, it just isn't possible to award everybody funding that way. So what I like to see is a really specific ask with good outcomes, good impact. So that's that's where uh, that's where you'll see success in your granting application. So instead of asking for twenty thousand, if you have a really good program and it's very specific, and we're able to see the outcomes of that, and you've got a specific ask of twelve thousand seven hundred, that to me is a little bit stronger than than over asking. And Rachel, uh, you have your hand up, so please go ahead. Thanks so much. Thanks for hosting today. Um, my question is within our application, do we need to reference the specific strategies um, that our project is in alignment with? Is that something that's required is to specifically state it or is it kind of implied if we're not really sure what you're looking for when you're reading over the applications? Great question. Um, so you, I, I would say, don't leave it open to interpretation because you want to be able to to properly communicate those ties and um my advice for any sort of application is to write it so that somebody who isn't from this community and doesn't know the inner workings can understand what you're driving at 
Uh, so it, it's clear, you can see the tie-ins, you can see the benefit. Um, and we'll, uh, in the application uh, information on our website, we have links to uh, a couple priorities of the county foundation and the municipality that priority will be given to if you can tie in uh, how that fits. So if you're looking at vital signs, for example, and your project ties into um, ties into let's say affordable housing uh, in some respect, then then you want to make that linkage there. Or if you're looking at the community safety and well-being plan and it and your it ties into the pillar of let's say domestic violence, you're going to want to reference it there. So don't leave it open to interpretation. I'm not going to ask you to quote it line by line and say on page six, item 11.4 references this. Uh, it would be it would be to your benefit just to say that our project aligns with this plan in this particular area and this is the outcome. Does that does that help, Rachel? Thumbs up. Yeah, that's yeah, that's great. Thank you. No problem. And any any questions, of course, uh, feel free to to reach out, and I'll put um, our email in the chat box. But it's just info at thecountyfoundation.ca. Deborah, that spurred another question. Okay, so say you hypothetically say you have a project for 2023, but it's a two part project. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you're doing the application, do you include the two parts or do you only go for the one part, the first part? You know what? Say, say they're two months apart. Say events are two months apart or whatever it is. Um, how would you approach that? What would you suggest? So my first suggestion would be those two parts would have to um, clearly be linked to an overall project. Otherwise, okay. it, it may look like you're trying to and like rather right. than putting in five applications, you're like, how do I put these five applications mm -hmm. in one? Um, mm -hmm. So You'll want to make sure that they're they're clearly linked. Um, OK, you know, why is this spread over two? Uh, so make sure that that is clearly demonstrated. Otherwise, there's going to be there is going to be a risk there that one might be funded and not the other, potentially. So just be prepared for that. Okay. You can clearly state why it's being spread against uh, across two, what the benefit of that is, and how it ties into those other priorities. Okay, thank you. No problem. These are great questions, everybody. Any other thoughts about uh, the community granting process? Uh, I have a question, yeah. Yeah, John, go ahead. Uh, the fees and charges by law, mm -hmm. um, is the fee for the Main Street Banner Program uh, uh, listed in that? I believe so, yeah, I think any, fees that we charge are in this wrapped up into this bylaw um so it should be in there i wonder i don't know if jane is there if she knows where it is in the bylaw i'm gonna pull it up now and just have a peek if you want to carry on i can put the answer in the the chat if uh if i can find it yeah absolutely um and just speaking of uh, of numbers, one other common question that I get is around um, budgets and financials, and, and people often ask, should I be presenting the budget for my organization or the project? And the answer is, it's the budget for your project. So we want to know, you know, how much it's going to cost to uh, deliver what you're looking to do, what other sources of revenue that you might have, and, and what the expense line items are. Um, so are you looking for in-kind venue support? What's the venue? What's the cost? Uh, do you have an entertainer coming? What's the cost? Um, food, all, all that good stuff would be in here. So it's specific to the project. And don't be afraid to show other sources of revenue. Some people have a fear of, oh my gosh, if I show that I've got other, you know, if I've got donations or something else going towards this project, I'm not going to be awarded a grant because I, I'm not as deserving or I don't need the funds as much as somebody else. Uh, and, and I will, don't be afraid to do that because that also shows 
um, viability of the project. You're not 100% reliant on grant dollars because that's risky because you have to go through an application process. It's, it's unsure if you're going to be awarded the funding or unsure if you're going to be awarded the full uh, amount of funding. So if, if we're looking at an application and it shows that uh, that your organization is contributing, let's say $500, you've got $1,000 in donations and you have a sponsorship of X dollars and you're requesting a grant of 2,500. That's a really strong application because you've got diversified income sources. Uh, we know that it's something that's going to run and that the support of the community grant is just going to help accelerate that. So don't be afraid to show those other revenue sources. It doesn't uh, it doesn't weaken your application at all. And in my mind, it actually strengthens it. And we have an answer have an for John. Yeah, so it is in there. Schedule V. Um, so street banners across Picton Main Street is listed for $225 in 2023. Okay, so they didn't increase the fee for this year. That's all I need to know. Okay, I guess not. Yeah, this was reviewed in uh, January, but if that's what it was, then it, it had not increased. Okay, all right, thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, Ashley. Any other questions? Okay, perfect. Well, thank you everybody so much for coming. I hope that this gave you a little bit more information than what you came in with. That's the whole purpose of hosting a webinar. Uh, otherwise, if you're just getting the same information that you can read online, what's what's the point? So I'm hoping that you got a little bit more information today. And uh, if you have any other specific questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to me at uh, info at the county and I'll try to help uh, guide and advise you on the process and uh, really appreciate your attendance and best of luck in the process.